wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and you shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Can we read 14 again, please? Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and ye shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Somebody shout, Amen. 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 Powerful scripture. You know, there's so many aspects of it that could you could relate to. Amen. Uh, for those who are waiting, the Lord's saying, just wait on him. Be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated with the praise. Um, at this time, I just want to find out if there's anyone here for the first time visiting. No? No first time visitors? Okay, I just want to greet everyone in Jesus' name. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen? You don't want to greet him? <laughs> I greet you all in Jesus' name. I um, just want to acknowledge, obviously, your pastor and uh, Sister Robinson or reverence in the building. Uh, CPC board, I greet you all in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And um, at this time, we're going to continue uh, our worship uh, in, in our giving. And I believe the ushers will direct us accordingly. All the praise and the shout means my voice is going. Amen. Isn't that a good thing in the Holy Ghost? Amen. So I'm just going to ask that we stand and we just make a declaration of our seeds as we sow into the kingdom. Hallelujah. You ready? Are you ready? Oh, that's about five people. All right. So let's just raise our hand. Even if we have nothing to give, we give of ourselves in worship. Amen. And we say, this is my seed. Come on, church. This is my seed. As I bring it to you, O oh Lord, I expect harvest. It may not come back in monetary form. But however you bless me, Come on, however you bless me, I will be satisfied. Hallelujah. And we're just going to worship the Lord as the ushers direct us. Let's go, let's go. It's raining. It's raining. It's raining all around me. All around me, I can feel it's a lot of rain. Until we are wet, until we are soaked 
Hallelujah. Do we just love to work? Do you love to worship? Hallelujah. I want to take it down a little bit. Is that all right? Because I know some of you don't want to jump up, jump up. You know, you, you just want to solemnly just stand and, you know, just soak it in. So we're going to change it a little bit. Is that all right? Is that all right? That's about 10 people. Hallelujah. There's a song that says, Christ alone. Cornerstone, a beautiful song, you know, for all the quiet worshipers. This is perfect for you, you know what I mean? <laughs> Hallelujah. Just an amazing song. We can just reflect on the Lord that in the midst of our weakness, He is our strength. Amen. Hallelujah. So join in as we all just worship the everlasting Father together. Amen. Sorry, that's not a song. Sorry, we want to get the right song. Amen? Hallelujah. We all need to be in the same spirit. <laughs> Many songs are the same title, but we've got to get the right one. Hallelujah. Cornerstone. Hallelujah. You know the one, right? Good. So we're going get to the, get the right words up as well, please. Cornerstone. Just the chorus. Just the chorus. Hallelujah. Cornerstone. Cornerstone. We may strong in the Savior's love through the Christ alone, Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love, through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. Say Christ alone. 
receive this word in their spirit right now. Hallelujah, Christ the Lord. The weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm. He is He is Lord of all. One more time. Praise the Lord, help us say, Christ the Lord, call us strong, we may strong in the Savior's love. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, church, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You don't need me to pump you this evening, hallelujah, to give your king a praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We exalt your name, Lord. We bless your name. Hallelujah, there is none like you, Lord. There is none like you. We give you praise. Hallelujah. As you remain standing, I just, without further ado, want to introduce directly to you our speaker for tonight. She needs no introduction. A powerful woman of God who will come, who will break down, dissect the word to you like never before in the spirit. You test the spirit, you know it is the spirit of God. Amen. Put your hands together for the one and only, truly original sister, evangelist, Arthur Stoddart. <laughs> Can somebody praise the Lord? We are here tonight and we are here to just lift up the name of the Lord and to give him all the glory and to give him all the honor because he deserves it. Amen, everybody? Amen. So we're going to stand one more time with me before we go to the word of God tonight. And the theme for this revival is the battle is the Lord's. Look at somebody and tell them, the battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord's. So with your Bibles in your hand... You're going to help me raise this chorus. Jehovah, we praise you. Jehovah, we praise you. We praise your name. We praise your name. 
Praise your name. Jehovah, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. We praise your name. We praise your name. We praise your name. Say Jehovah. going to do it one more time. If you know who you're singing about, open your mouth. Ah, do a roll check. Can you do a roll check for me? Check who's on your roll. Yeah, check who's on your roll. If, if it looks like there are no crazy worshipers on your roll, find a different seat. Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. If, if they look like there are no worshippers on your role, it's okay to find a different role. But you're singing about Jehovah. We talked about him today. He is the God of your situations, not just situation. And there is something about worship. I'm going to preach, but I want you to get there. Because if you're not there in your spirit, it doesn't matter what I declare up here tonight. If your spirit is not at the place, you cannot receive what God is going to pour out on you. Amen, somebody. We're going to do that song two more times. Praise team, please come with me. Wait, 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 wait. And the person that you're standing beside, look at them. Just look at them. Just face them. Say, I don't know, I don't know what, what your battle is. Your battle is. But, guess what? but guess what? The battle, the battle is fixed. Find somebody else. Tell them, I don't know what your battle is. But the battle is fixed. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody begin to worship him now. Somebody begin to worship him. We praise your name. Praise him. Thank you tonight for your presence. 
We feel there's already a shift in the atmosphere. Yokes are being destroyed right now. Healing is taking place right now. Restoration is in the house right now. And so God, we ask you to come upon us and dwell with us and release your power in Jesus' name. Amen, somebody. Turn with me quickly tonight. We're going into some books. So the first one we're going to is the book of Genesis chapter 15. Verse 5 to 14. Genesis chapter 15, verse 5 to 14. Then we're in the book of Exodus chapter 6 and Exodus chapter 13. So let's go to Genesis first. Genesis 15, verse 5 to 14. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And he believed in the Lord. And he counted it to him for righteousness. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me an heifer of three years old and a she goat of three years old and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these, and divided them in the midst, and laid each piece one against another, but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, an horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. Exodus chapter 6. And we're going to read from verse 1 to verse 6. Then the Lord said unto Moses, now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go. And with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. And I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, wherein they were strangers. And I have also heard the groaning of the children of Israel, whom the Egyptians keep in bondage, and I have remembered my covenant." Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretch out arm and with great judgments. And final scripture, Exodus chapter 13. Verse 
17. And we are going all the way to verse 18. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest preadventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea and the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the battle is fixed. Mm -hmm. It's fixed. Sit, you can be seated. Uh, it is very important to not try to understand God. Very important. Because by the, th the time you think you have figured him out, he goes again and he does the unthinkable. I believe we serve a mighty God. We talked about him today. The El Gibor. Awesome in all his ways. And I found out then, if the God that I serve is absolute, then nothing happens by chance. Nothing just happens. God is the supreme being. Do you believe that tonight? He is above everything and everybody. He is omnipotent, which means he has unlimited power. He is omnipresent, which means he is everywhere. He can be right here in London, in Jamaica, in China, in Brazil, in Australia, all at the same time. God is omniscient, which means he knows everything. Look at somebody and say, God knows everything. Ah. Nothing surprises God. Come on, talk to me, somebody. When the, the serpent thought that he had won, Little did he know that God already had a plan B. And I wouldn't even call it a plan B. I would say a plan A. He already knew he would send his son. He already knew that he would redeem us back to himself. Because he's God. And he knows everything. The Bible said that the earth is the Lord's. The earth. It didn't touch the heavens yet. Uh, it didn't went up into space yet. It started by just saying the earth is the Lord's. But when you stop to think about everything, uh, the universe belongs to God. Ah, talk to me somebody. And not only that, but you and I belong to God. Look at somebody and say, you belong to God. God is awesome. In the book of Psalms 19 verse 1, it says, And the heavens declare the glory of God. Come on, talk to me. So if you want to know if God is really good, just take a look on the outside. Just look at the trees, look at the birds, and then you'll know just how awesome of a God you serve. When it's night in one country, it's day in another. 
When it's snowing somewhere, it's raining somewhere else. And the sun is shining somewhere else. Come on, talk to me, somebody. There are seas that cannot intertwine because he has put a gap between it. How awesome of a God we serve. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 28 says, Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, what does he do? Not what? He doesn't faint. Neither is he weary. No. It brings back to mind when Elijah started to mock the prophets of Baal. He said, it looks like your God has gone to sleep. Or, or maybe he's, he's taking a walk. Or maybe he's having a conversation with somebody because he ain't hearing you. But how many of us can stand here tonight and say, when I call, he answers. Now, God is in control of everything. He is the God who creates, and he is the God who destroys. And so it is tonight that when we're focusing on the battle is the Lord's, there is something that you have to know from the beginning. That the battle is fixed. It sounds unfair, but it's fixed. Now, the definition of the word battle, it means a sustained fight between large organized forces. A sustained fight between large organized forces. Other words for battle is fight, struggle, or confrontation. Now, when I looked at that definition, the scripture came back to my mind where it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers, against spiritual wickedness in where? High places. So a battle is a fight between large organized forces, which means that the enemy is not an idiot. Come on. The devil is not stupid. He is very smart. Amen? Yes, he is. Now, the definition of the word fix it means fastened securely in position. But that's not the meaning I want to look at. There's another meaning that says predetermined and not able to change. Oh my God, somebody going to get happy tonight. It also means established, determined, confirmed. Ah. Uh. So it simple means that my victory is inevitable. We're not getting to the victory part yet. Let's focus on the fixed battle. The battle is established so that you and I are already determined victors and not victims. All right. Let's look at God. So while we were in the book of Genesis, Abraham, before he was Abraham, was having a conversation with God. God said, can you look up in the sky? He said, yes. Do you see the stars? He says, yes. He says, that's how your inheritance, your people are going to be. And I am going to bring them into a land I am going to give them a stranger's land and they will inherit it. He went on further to say, but how will I know that they will inherit it? And God begins to give him specific instructions to do accordingly. Now, when you got to a particular verse, the Lord now interjects something that Abram did not see coming. But because God is omniscient and he knows everything, he was able to tell it to Abram. He said, look, your people, your inheritance, they are going to journey into a far country. And when they sojourn there, they are going to become slaves. They are going to be imprisoned. And they are going to be in that situation for 400 years. Now, 
Hold up. How is it, God, that you are giving me a land for my people to possess? But yet still you are telling me that you are going to allow them to go in bondage. How is it that I'm paying my tithes and I'm still struggling to pay my rent? How is it that you say that by your stripes I'm healed and I'm still struggling with this sickness? How is it that you say that I'm going to be blessed when I go out and blessed when I come in, but when I go out I'm frustrated, when I come in I'm tired? You promised never to leave me or forsake me, yet I feel like I'm all by myself. But God said to Abraham, even though they will be in bondage, I am going to bring them out. He says, I am not just going to bring them out, but that nation that would have, uh, have them in bondage, oppress them, afflict them, and cause them to be in slavery, I am going to deal with them. So what are you saying? The thing that you are going through right now is a part of the plan of God. Oh. No. God could never allow that to happen to me. That's a devil. God could never allow me to lose a person I love. That's a devil. God could never give me a job and then take back the job from me. No, that's the devil. You see, when God allows anything to happen, it's because he has something to do with it. Can we go there tonight? When we jump over into Exodus chapter 6, we see God talking to Moses. Now, he's talking to Moses because he went to Pharaoh and asked Pharaoh to let the people go. And Pharaoh said, you know, we want to go and we want to worship and sacrifice unto our God. We want to journey three days into the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, okay, these people are lazy. They want to go and sacrifice with simple means. They're not doing enough work. So I'm going to increase their task. And I'm going to do something to them. I'm going to take away the bricks and they will have to find their own wheat and straws to make their own bricks. And they still have to accomplish the task that is given to them. So they end up having being oppressed even more. And the people were upset with Moses because they begin to say, but you see, this is what you have caused to come upon us. Because you've come back for, from wherever you are to tell us that God the Almighty, the I am that I am, is going to take us out of Egypt. But what we are experiencing is an increase in our burdens, our struggles. Anybody ever been there? Oh, all right. Nobody not preaching with me tonight. The preacher come and tell you, God is going to bring you out. And when you go home, the phone rings. And it's bad news on the line. And then you say, but God, didn't you just tell me you're going to bring me out? But there has been an increase in my struggles, an increase in my sorrows, an increase in the things that I'm facing. So Moses goes back to the Lord to inquire what's going on. God said, well, Moses, I am going to bring you out. And I am going to do it so well that Pharaoh is going to run you out of town. Now, remember that. Pharaoh is going to run you out. He said, when I told Abram that I am going to give him a land, I remembered my promise he said unto him, I wasn't known by Jehovah, but now you're going to know me as not just God Almighty alone, but also by Jehovah. 
Jehovah. He said in verse 8, 6, he says, Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the burdens. Some of us are under some burdens. They're heavy and we can hardly bear them. But after this conversation right here, if you read the book of Exodus, Pharaoh still did not let the people go. They went through some more struggles. They had to still build some more bricks. They might have lost some more loved ones. And things seem to be getting worse before it gets better. Things will always get worse before it gets better. So let's go a little bit deeper. You've got to understand that your life has been designed by God. He says, I am the Alpha and I am the Omega, which means I am the beginning and I am the end. Everything starts with God and everything ends with God. Come on, somebody. Now, what you got to understand is that Everything that I am going through right now, God knows I will be going through this. Uh, he knows I, I, I will be crying out at night. He knows I would have a little struggle in my faith sometimes. He knew. So watch this. When you go over now into chapter 13 of the book of Exodus. The Bible said, after they had gone through the plagues, the water turning into blood, the frogs, the lice, and all these things, and the death angel came, Pharaoh eventually let them go. He literally told them, Get out. But then I looked at something again in chapter 13. And I realized that when the people of Israel came out of Egypt, there was an easy way for them to get to the land of promise. There was a closer way to go into Canaan. But God did not allow them to go the easy way. That don't sound right. Why would not God allow them to go the easy way? Why isn't God allowing you to go the easy way? My God. Why is he allowing you to struggle? Why are you going through pain? Why are you sick? Why are your children driving you up the walls? Why did he allow you to lose your job? My God. Why did he allow you uh, to be divorced? You want to know why? If he takes you the easy way, you're going to turn back into Egypt. If he takes you uh, the easy way, 
you're going to give him ordinary praise. If he takes you the easy way, you're going to have a baby fate. Uh, 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 uh. You see, I'm going to preach the other part tomorrow. But let me give you a synopsis. He took them into a trap zone. The mountains were on either side. And a big red sea. And Pharaoh. You see, everything that is happening, oh, it's happening because God has assigned it that way. Oh. All right, let me show you. When I looked up what was match fixing, it says that this occurs in sports, right? And it is happening while the match is being played. So whoever fixes the match or whichever team they fix it with, before they walk out on the field... In their jerseys, they already know how it's going to go down. Mm -hmm. So, when God put you in the situation that you're in, and you're there screaming off your lungs and acting like you're crazy, he says, I already know how this is going to pay out. Oh, my goodness. Because I have fixed it in a way that no matter what you go through, you can't lose. Oh, Jesus. Job situation was fixed. Yeah. Because God said, have you considered my servant Job? Satan said, well, I know you got Job over there. But you got an edge around Job. He said, well, I can't move the edge. You know, just don't touch his body. And when he removed the edge, he touched everything that Job loved. What do you do when God allows the enemy to touch everything that you love? He touched it. He killed all his children. And the Bible said that Job did something that is ridiculous. <laughs> he got up. He shaved his head. And he bowed himself. And he began to worship God. The devil came back and said, well, God, that ain't enough. I, I need to touch his body. And he filled his body with what? Sores. Sometimes we have some soreful situations. You know, we've been going through one thing after the other. And it seems as if we can't even turn to the left or to the right without feeling some form of pain and discomfort. Anybody ever been there? But what God knew was that uh, what Job had in the beginning, uh, he was going to restore it in the end. Uh, come on, talk to me somebody. Uh, and Job had double in the end. Uh, you got to understand uh, that what you are experiencing, uh, it's only for the glory of God. It's fixed. So when they left, he said, I ain't going to take them the easy way. Because if I take them the easy way and they face the Palestinians and they fear war, they're going to return back into Egypt. So I'm going to take them into a trap zone. What you're saying to me? If you could look at your life right now, just bring it up before you right now. The battle that you're facing right 
this minute. Put it before yourself. Bring it up in your mind. You are struggling right now. You're in discomfort right now. You feel like giving up the towel right now. But God is saying that I have already told you that behold, I give unto you power. I have already told you that I will be with you even unto the ends of the earth. I have already told you uh, whatever you bind on earth uh, is bound in heaven. Uh, I have already told you uh, that he that dwelleth uh, in the secret place uh, of the Most High uh, shall abide uh, under the shadow uh, of the Almighty. It is fixed. So when they were going through and when they were in bondage, they didn't understand that it was already orchestrated by God for them to be in bondage. Because God was going to use that same bondage to drive fear in their enemies. Woo! You ain't preaching with me because you didn't get that. The very thing that had them bound was the very thing that was going to bring them victory. All right, let's look at it. The people and the nations around them knew that they were in bondage. So your enemy know you're struggling. Your enemy know that you're going through a rough season, Lord Jesus. The enemy knows uh, that things ain't going your way right now. Mm -hmm. But God said, I have fixed it so that when I bring you out, your enemy going to know when you come out, Lord Jesus. I wish I had a church up in here. I said, your enemies are going to know when God brings you out. Woo. The Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites. The Canaanites, the Philistines knew that these were a people in bondage. But God said, I'm going to fix it so much that I'm going to use the same thing that is oppressing you, uh, the same thing that has you crying at night, uh, the same thing that has you depressed, uh, the same thing that have you confused, uh, and I'm going to use it, uh, and I'm going to turn it, uh, and I'm going to let it be your weapon, uh, and I'm going to bring you out. We don't get there yet, but we're going to get there tomorrow. When they came out, nations knew they were out. So right now, what you need to understand is that you can't look at what you're going through right now. You got to look ahead of when you're coming out. We're going to go a little bit deeper and then we're going to do something here right now. Now, notice something that God is very much intentional very intentional how the people got to Egypt was that because Joseph was already in Egypt and there was a famine in the land and God set it up in a way that he would have become the ruler and his people would have been there and they would have received favor through Joseph but then Joseph died what do you do when favor dies? When favor seems to be dried up. And then in the same place that you used to have favor is now the same place, a bondage. So the Bible said that the people were in Egypt for over 4 
100 years. Are you telling me that God fixed this situation so much that he fixed it for them to stay in it for 400 years? Some of you are in some situation for years. Some is months. For some is weeks. For some is days. But if you serve the El Gibor, the mighty God, if it's one thing I know, any situation God fixed, it is well fixed. Which means you are already predetermined to come out of whatever it is that you're in right now. So stand with me. My life is in God's hand. And every season has an expiration date. Everything that we buy has an expiration date. Every struggle has an expiration date. Every disappointment has an expiration date. There is coming a day when it will end. So God put them in bondage. And it took God to take them out. Whatever you are in, God is going to take you out. But he said to tell you that the battle is fixed. When he came and he died on the cross, it was over. It was over. Because when he got up, he got up with all power in his hands. And when he sent you and I, the spirit of God, the gift of the Holy Ghost, we received power. So you might be saying, preacher, when I go home, I'm going home to a marriage that seems as if, seems as if it's just going under the rocks. I'm going home to children that don't listen to me. I'm going home to the pain of losing my loved one. I'm going home to the reality that I don't got no job. I'm going home to the reality of bills piled up on my table. And I don't know how am I going to pay my way. I'm hurt. I'm broken. I'm tired. My faith is low. I hear what you're saying. But ah, my reality doesn't match up to what you're declaring. Yes. And guess what? That's why we're in revival. Revival has come to strengthen the things that remain and are about to die. Now, I want the people who have some serious battles to come. You are going through hell. Come. You can't utter what you're going through. You can't talk about what you're going through. You don't know where to start. Come. Come. And if you're coming and you say, oh, preacher, are you going to pray me out of the battle that I'm in? Nah. I'm not going to pray you out of the battle you're in. You know why? Because the battle that you're in is fixed. 
And God, you see, sometimes we are praying for God to take us out of the battle. And God is saying, I don't have to take you out to give you the victory. I can allow you to stay right in the battle and have the victory. As well as I can take you out and you still have the victory. But whichever way God works, it's perfect. The word of God says, his ways are not my ways and his thoughts are not my thoughts. Don't worry about it. Before the revival is done, you're going to run up and jump and skip. But we got we to gotta talk word. You see, when you're getting into revival, you got to bring your spirit to where God is. And then he will release the supernatural. But how can God pour out when your faith is low? Now, when you know that the, if, you're, if you're in a match and the match is fixed, it is said that when they go out on the field, they can't allow it to look obvious. If the other side just allow them to score just like that, then they're going to know something is wrong. So they still have to go on the field and kick each other down. Lord Jesus. They still have to run for 90 minutes. Talk to me. And they still have to score without it looking obvious. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, God is saying, your battle is fixed in such a way that you're going to have the victory. But you still have to do some stuff. You still have to pray. You still have to fast. You still have to worship. Even though I am going to give you the victory, you still have to do some stuff. So what was required of the children of Israel? They had to do two things. One, the Bible said that God told them when they were leaving Egypt, they must spoil the Egyptians. So they must borrow from them. And two, they had to walk. They had to walk, which means they had to go forward. Your battle tonight requires you to do something. It's fixed, but you have to do something. And the one of the weapons that you have that is greater than any other weapon when you are low in your spirit, apart from the word of God, it is your worship. Your worship is able to bring you to a place where God can pour out in you. For the battle is not what? Yours, but it is the Lord's. I want you to hold on to one person beside you. Everybody else, can you stand? It is fixed. It's fixed. What you are going through is temporary. <laughs> Some of you don't get that. The pain is temporary. The sickness is temporary. Gosh, I told my heart. I feel God in my spirit. It's, just tell somebody, it's temporary. Because your battle is fixed. Oh, weeping may endure for a night, but joy 
Usharabosa, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. It's not always going to be like this. I'm not always going to be right here. I'm not always going to feel this way. I'm going to come out. Because my battle is fixed. Hold on to your neighbor. We're going to begin to pray for the spirit of endurance, for the spirit of endurance, that God will lift our faith, that God will restore the joy, that God will restore our peace. Hey, God. So we can stand in the midst of this battle. As you're holding on to the hand of your neighbor. Begin to pray. Open your mouth. And start praying. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, open your mouth. Ah, uh, yeah, shaya. Yeah. And start to pray. Come on, it's fixed. It's a fixed battle. And God is going to get the victory. But I know you're low in your faith right now. So open your mouth and begin to pray and ask God to strengthen your faith. Strengthen your mind. Jesus. Somebody, holy ghost. Come on, I need you to start to pray. Yes, pray. You're in the fight of your life, but God said the battle is fixed. Tararaboshaya. Naya. Ega. Iloraboshama. Come on, you're almost going to come out of this. It's fixed. Right where you are uh, is right where I want you to be. Uh, come on, somebody, open your mouth and begin to pray. Holy Ghost, Ashaya. Ega. Ega. Somebody open your mouth and call on the name of the Lord. I need somebody to pray deeper. Come on, somebody. Pray until your prayer begins to shift the atmosphere in this house. Can somebody at the back begin to pray? Mighty God. It's fixed, it's fixed, it's fixed, it's fixed, it's fixed. It's fixed, it's fixed, it's fixed. Ay, 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 ay. Hey, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. Hey, shut Messiah. Holy Ghost, come on, squeeze the hand of your neighbor and say, I will lift up mine eyes. I will lift up mine eyes. I will lift up mine eyes. I will lift my shot. Hey, I will lift up mine eyes. Yay. The battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord's. It is a fixed fight. And you will be victorious. It is a fixed fight. And you will be delivered. It is a fixed fight. Mighty God. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. 
I feel something happening in this house. I needed to pray for two more minutes. I needed to pray for two more minutes. I needed to pray for two more minutes. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So God, somebody open your mouth. Somebody open your mouth and begin to pray. No. It's fixed. It's fixed. No, oh, yeah, it's temporary. And it's fixed. I'm going to come out of this. 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 Tarabosha. Holy Ghost, squeeze the hand of your neighbor and say, you're going to come out of this. Ay, 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 ay. Yay. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Before we go any further tonight, Sister Devinia, can you come? Sister Madge, can you come? Reverend, can you come? Bishop, I'm not seeing Bishop. Okay, he's coming. You see? It's one thing to get excited. But it's another thing to receive a word in your spirit. And then walk home, open your door. Can, can you take my shoes off? Yeah. Open your door. Because you see, the thing about it is, we got some real struggles. I, I am preaching to the fake people tonight. Some real struggles. Some people going through some real tests. Some real storms. The word that I have released in your spirit tonight. You're going to take that word home. Lord Jesus. You're going to take it on your job. You're going to take it to your house. You're going to take it to your children. You're going to take it to your marriage. You're going to take it to your single self. It says, what I am going through is fixed. So when you open the door tonight... Tell the devil, it's fixed. Lord Jesus, I feel a preach coming on. It don't look like it, but God said, my battle is fixed. He's behind it. I feel God. So watch this. I'm going to give him a fixed praise tonight. When I go home, there are going to be bills on my table. But I'm going to hold them up. And I'm going to say, this battle is fixed. When I go home, there might be pain in my body. But I'm going to lay my hands on myself and I'm going to say this battle is fixed. At the end of this, God is going to get glory. At the end of this, I'm going to come out. Bishop, you're going to take the oil and you're gonna, we're going to anoint everybody in this house. Everybody. 
Come closer. Just come. Take your stuff and come closer. He says, He who hath begun a good work in me is faithful. Is faithful. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Is faithful. Tell Bishop to pour some of the oil in your hands and go and anoint the people. Now, this is where I've reached in my life and in my ministry. I don't no longer say that when this happens, it's the devil. And when that happens, it's God. I say everything that happens to me, God is in control. Because the devil have to get permission from God to touch me. I feel like saying that one more time. The devil have to get permission from God to touch me. So whatever I'm going through right now, it is God who's allowing it to happen. And if God allows it, if he puts me in it, he can take me out. Look at somebody and tell them, uh, if God puts you in the battle, uh, he can take you out. I feel a praise coming on. Praise team, come up here. I say anoint everybody else. We're going to give him a fix it praise. I don't know how I'm coming out. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. But I hear the Holy Ghost say, the battle is fixed. The battle is fixed. The battle is fixed. I wish I had a church up in here. I said, I wish I had a church up in here. I wish I had a church up in here. I wish I had a church up in here. Let me know when everybody has been anointed. Now watch this. People who knows El Gibor, the mighty God. Knows that when he fixed something, it's well fixed. All right. While I'm waiting on everybody to be anointed. David and Goliath's battle was fixed. A giant was slain with a stone. You got to help me up in here. Do you believe, hold the music, do you really believe that an ordinary stone could slay a giant? No. 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 It was fixed. It was God who slayed Goliath. When Daniel was thrown in the lion's den, it 
was fixed. Lord Jesus. When Elijah called the battle between Baal and himself, it was fixed. Lord Jesus. When Joshua took the people to Jordan to cross over. And when they got to Jericho, it was fixed. Now, 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 hold it one minute. Can you help me on my microphone? I feel like I can't hear myself. When they got to Jericho, God said to them, walk around the city. And on a particular day, after six days, you should do what? Shout. God said, I'm going to fix this battle so you don't need to do nothing else but shout. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> hey! Right, let me tell you why the battle is fixed and see if you can get happy and we're going to do something. The battle is fixed so that God can get the glory. He says, if I allow you to do it by yourself, you won't praise me. So I've got to fix it. So when I pull you out, I will get the glory. Shout out Uh, we, I feel somebody getting excited. I feel somebody get excited. I hear God say, the bills that you're crying over, I'm going to pay them. The sickness in your body, I'm going to heal you. But I have fixed it to get the glory. To get the glory. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to come out of this. I'm going to come out of this. I'm going to come out of this. It's fixed for me to come out. Oh, Shataya. I said, the battle is fixed for me to come out. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Take this and that lady right there with her hands behind that gentleman, put it on her. So you're right there looking at me. Lift your hands. Yes, you. Yes, you. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Yes. There's a release coming upon you right now. I hear God say you're struggling. But I'm going to lift your faith to know that the battle, the battle, the battle, the battle is the Lord's. Hold on to your neighbor. We're getting ready now. Hold on to your praise team. Come right here with me. Come right here with me. Stand right, right here, so. 
Can everybody stand on your feet now? So today we spoke about El Gibor, the mighty God. And tonight we are declaring that El Gibor, the mighty God, has fixed the battle. It's fixed. It's a fixed fight. The devil wants you to think that you're in the fight by yourself. But you're not alone. Look at somebody and say, you ain't alone. Mighty God is with you. Jehovah Jireh is with you. Jehovah Makadesh is with you. Jehovah Tisudu is with you. Wushata Rabosa. Hey, El Elyon is with you. Come on, somebody. Jehovah Elohim is with you. Hold on to somebody. I want to see everybody holding on to somebody. Is everybody anointed yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Bring the shawl again, Sister Devinia, Minister Devinia. Bring it up. Mash up the plan of the enemy. Oh. Where you're weak tonight, you're going to be strengthened. Hold on to it. Where you're weak, strength is going to come to you. Some of us, we are fighting the battles in our flesh. So we are driven by your flesh. And the spirit man is weak. But Paul says that we are to walk in the spirit. And we are not supposed to walk in where our flesh. I think I got, what, 10 minutes left on the clock. Yeah, coming down. The person that you're holding on to, look at them if you can. If you can't look at both persons, at least look at one person. And tell them, right now, I am about to give God a fixed praise. Let me explain that. This praise ain't conditional. This is an unconditional praise. This is a praise that says, I know what's behind those doors. But I don't care what's behind. Shut up. The doors. Hey. Your battle is sickness. Lokobo Shabai Kibandu Sheto. Rabaku sika basik sik sik. Some days you're strong, and other days you're weak. Shanda rabababago sheto masaya. The reports don't look good. Shaya. But I heard the Holy Ghost said, whose reports will you believe? The praise that I'm going to release right now is a praise that says, I don't care how I'm feeling. I don't care. What's happening at my house right now? The word of the Lord says, my battle is. I feel something, I feel it. I feel something, I feel it. I feel it. Atarabosaya, the battle.
is fix. Pour the oil over our head, down in our bosom. God going to give you a blood transfusion. I hear it's fixed, it's fixed. Squeeze the hand of your neighbor and start to worship God right now. I say, squeeze, don't give them the music yet. Hey, sire. Somebody open your mouth. Ah, somebody open your mouth. I say, somebody open your mouth and give him a fixy praise. A fixy praise. A fixy praise. I feel Rabo Shataya Rebo Shataya Rebo Shataya Somebody open your mouth hey, Give me something Give me Come on church worship him Come on, church, worship him. Come on, church, worship him. Come on, church, worship him. Come on, church. Hey! Yes. Yes. Somebody worship him. Somebody worship him. Somebody worship him. Somebody praise him. I said, somebody praise him. I said, somebody praise him. I said, get to Russia. Hey, yo. Somebody praise him, man.
going to hand over to Bishop in a bit. The person that you're holding on to, hold on to them with both hands. Hey, Oh, Face them, face them, yes. Ma. Mm. Heaviness, mighty God, release. You got to release yourself. Face the person that you're holding on to. Face them, face them, face them, face them, face them. Minister Devinium, put the shawl on that lady. Heavy burdens. Heavy, heavy burdens. Heavy burdens. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Every heavy burden. Heavy, heavy burdens. Yes. Yes, see there. Maya. Mind, the mind, the mind, the mind. Hey, Mandi Darabaho Shetarabahaya. You confuse mind, God Almighty. He bahata heart, a heart, a heart, a heart, a heart. He la Yes, lay your hand on our heart. Yes, ta Mighty God. Sakuru Musha Yarada. Yes, that's it. Yes, yes. Esha, Ushata, Nashet, Mushe, Rororo. Ah, come on, that's your healing coming in your body. Healing, Yesha, He Katama, Jose. Yes, that's it. Come on, receive. Come on, open your mouth. Eya, Kororosa, Atatata, Shaya, Holy Ghost. Hey. This is what you're going to do for me. The person that you're holding on to, look at them. Take a good look at them. Because after this, there is an anointing that's going to sit on them. This anointing is restoring their faith. It's going to strengthen their minds. It's going to give them courage. Hey, yes, God. Ay, 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 ay. It's going to give them strength. Yes. 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 I want you to begin to begin, 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 begin to worship. Open your mouth. Yes. Yes, 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 Aya Shato Shaya Shanda Ketara Rebosha Makutu Rose. Come on, open your mouth. Open your mouth. You got to open your mouth. You got to, hey, sha ba ba ba.
just keep on reaching out to the Lord if you're still being ministered to at this time. Don't need to return to your seats. Just to remind you, tomorrow evening we are here again, 7.30. Um, and of course, on Tuesday and on Wednesday, the battle is the Lord's. Amen? And God has given us this week so that we can bring our conflicts to Him. And He says, all you have to do is do nothing apart from let the Lord have the victory for you. Amen? The Bible says, you will hold your peace and the Lord will fight for you. So let's just sing for our closing song. I sing praises to you, Lord, for your name is great and worthy to be praised. Amen. I sing praises to your name, O Lord, praises to your name, O Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be. his face to shine upon you and give you peace as you remember the battle is the Lord's. God bless you. Have a great day tomorrow and come and join us for your blessing tomorrow evening.